Okay, 6.1 radian measure. So given a formula, theta is equal to a over r, a represents the arc length, r represents the radius length, and finally, what we need to remember is that both the arc length and the radius must be measured in the same set of units. Theta, as we see here, is going to represent the measure of the angle in radian measure. So it's going to be very important that when we use this formula, this theta represents the measure of the angle in radian measure. Now, in order to understand what radian measure is, we need to do some fo the following. So here we go. Let's draw a circle and we look at the anywhere from the center from the center to the outside of the circle is known as the radius. The angle that's measured to create this arc length, so this is an arc that we take out. This angle is called the measure of the central angle. Theta would be here. The arc length A would be here. Okay, so that would be A and this would be theta, which would be the measure of the sector that we're taking out. Keep in mind that theta is measured in radian measure. Now if, for example, the arc length was equal to the ra radius length, it would mean that theta would equal 1. Okay. What that implies is that we would have one radian measure would exist if the arc length and the radius length were the same. Okay, now let's figure out how radian measure is calculated. Let's go back to learn what we learned in elementary school about the circumference of a circle. Circumference of a circle states that it equals 2 pi r, 2 times pi times the radius. Now, keep in mind that it takes 360 degrees to go all the way around a circle. Alright, so going from here all the way around the circle, it would take 360 degrees. Knowing this, this 360 degrees, whether we go forwards or backwards, and backwards would imply negative, 360 degrees, we know that to go all the way around to measure that angle, that will equal 360 degrees. Something else to note, back in grade 11 we learned about quadrant numbers. Quadrant 1 is the positive x, positive y quadrant. Quadrant 2 is the negative x, positive y. Quadrant 3 is the negative x, negative y, and quadrant 4 is the positive x, negative y quadrant. All right, And each quadrant is separated by degrees. We remember that this starts at 0, which goes up to 90 degrees, all the way over to 180 degrees, to 70 at the bottom, and 360. So, we know to go all the way around a circle, we need to go 360 degrees. 360 degrees is going to be equivalent to 2 pi r. What that means is that the radius is equal to 360 over 2 pi, which means the radius is calculated by saying 180 over pi. One radian, okay, one radian, how many radii will fit on the arc length? One radian is equal to 180 over pi. What that means is that, remember that theta is equal to arc length over radius? Well, that tells us that because of that, we could actually replace the radius with 180 over pi, and we get that the theta is equal to a times pi over 180. What that means is that we could actually find the arc length of anything using these values. So let's move forwards. 
This again is very important. 1 radian is equal to 180 over pi. So, to measure from degrees to radians, we take the degree value and we times it by pi over 180. If we want to go from radians to degrees, we have to multiply by 180 over pi. And this will keep everything in simple order for us. All right, let's move on to the next one. Example one, you're asked to convert 225 degrees to radians. What does that mean? Well, take the degree value and, and set it up. Pi to 180, and we have to figure out how much it is in 225 degrees. We can set it up like an inequality statement, sorry, a statement where one value is missing and we cross multiply. Ultimately, all you're really doing each and every single time, folks, is you're taking the value of 225 degrees and multiplying by pi over 180 to get the value in radians. And it will be the same regardless of which way you use. You're guaranteed to get 5 pi over 4 for this answer. So again, you're con let's go back to the previous page. If you're converting from, and let's put this in a different color, folks. All right, here we go. If we're converting from degrees to radians, we multiply by pi over 180. Move from radians to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. If you remember this, you'll never go wrong. Let's move forwards. So we have this, which we calculate. Let's move to the next question. Example two, convert to degrees. So we have both of these and we're asked to convert to degrees. This is in radians. So we take three pi over five. Okay, we take three pi over five, folks. Three pi over five and times it by 180 over pi because we're converting to degrees. And when we do this, we should get an answer of, let's see, what will we get the answer of? Okay, so when we multiply 3 pi over 5 times 180 over pi, you get 108 degrees. Let's look at the next one, 1.75 radians. This already has pi implemented into it, so we can take 1.75 times it by 180 over pi, because we still have to divide by the pi that was multiplied in there, and we will get 106.2676 degrees. So here we have two values in terms of degrees, and again, all we do is multiply by 180 over pi. All right, next part. So the London Eye Ferris wheel has a diameter of 135 meters and completes one revolution in 30 minutes. Determine the angular velocity in radians per second. So we need to know how much the angular velocity is in radians per second. So what's happening is that we this particular object has a radius of 135 divided by 2, but we need the angular velocity for part A. So part A, so we have our radius. So part A, let's talk about the angular velocity. This is too much here, so let's just go back a little bit. So we have 2 pi times, now what are we looking at here is radians per second. So we know we're moving 2 pi every 30 minutes. Now we need to calculate per second, so it's 2 pi every 30 times 60. So what's happening now is that we need to know how many radians per second it's actually moving. This is, it's moving exactly 2 pi to go around once in 30 minutes. And we want to know radians per second, so we're going to divide this value by 60. So we get 2 pi in 1800 seconds. To, that means reduced is pi over 900. It's pi over 900 
radians per second. So it's moving that much radians for every second, this value right here that you're looking at. Part B says, how far has the rider traveled in at 10 minutes into the ride? Well, 10 minutes into the ride, remember that this is how many it's traveled per second. So we could actually take this value and times it by 60 to find out the minute and times it by 10 to get that value. Or we can look at this, the angular velocity. To find using, using our theta equals arc length over radius. How we do this is understand this. We need to know how much has traveled in 10 minutes. Theta is traveled 2 pi over 3. So how come it's 2 pi over 3? is equal to the arc length divided by 67.5. Why is it 2 pi over 3, you may ask? Remember that it takes 30 minutes to go all the way around. We want to know in 10 minutes, it takes 2 pi to go 30 minutes, 2 pi over 3 to go for 10 minutes, because we're taking our 2 pi and dividing it by 3 to find out one-third of this time that's traveled. So that's where the 2 power over 3 comes. Remember that theta represents the angle measured in radians. So 2 power over 3 is an me angle measured in radians. Now, the arc length we don't know because that's what we need to find. How far the rider has traveled is the idea that if you start at the bottom, eventually you're going to go one-third of the way up. How far did you actually travel to move from the bottom to one-third of the way up? Well, when you do that, so you're going to divide it by 67.5, which is our radius. We calculate it, and you find out that the arc length is equal to 45 pi meters, and that's an okay answer, but that's not the answer we're looking for. We need the approximated answer to four decimal places which is 141.3717 meters. The person has traveled 45 pi meters. We're looking at exact value. 45 pi meters when converted pi to 3.14. Using the pi button, you get 141.3717 meters. All right, that's the end of 6.1. Take care, folks.